Joey Jordison is without a doubt one of the most beloved metal drummers of all time. The metal world was shocked when they found out he was leaving the band Slipknot, a group he helped create many years ago. Since his departure from the band, Joey started a group called Scar the Martyr, which ultimately broke up in 2016, later starting a band called Sinsanum, which unfortunately hasn't released any new material since about 2018. His band Vimic has also been inactive since around that time. Despite these projects, Joey has mostly kept a low profile since leaving Slipknot with a few sporadic interviews and well wishes to his former bandmates in Slipknot, including expressing the hopeful sentiment that he'll one day share the stage again with his former bandmates, which could either take place at a one-off performance like, let's say, a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, or a full-time return to the group, which seems highly unlikely. To those still holding out hope for an eventual return to Slipknot with Joey Jordison, it unfortunately doesn't seem like this is even a remote possibility. For one, Jay Weinberg appears to be doing an outstanding job in the band, both internally and with his unbelievable talents behind the kit. And we're about to go over several other reasons that Joey has cited in interviews over the last few years. There's been a lot of new information about why Joey is no longer in Slipknot. So sit back, relax, as we take a look at the reasons why Joey and Slipknot parted ways. By the way, if you haven't already, drop a thumbs up on this video and hit that subscribe button with notifications on for more deep dives just like this one and breaking news and updates about your favorite rock musicians. Joey Jordison was born on April 26, 1975. His parents, Steve and Jackie, also had two daughters. Sadly, Joey's parents would divorce when he was young, and he would live with his mother. As a teenager, Joey played drums in a speed metal thrash band and was heavily involved in a then thriving local music scene. He would perform with bands like Atomic Opera, featuring his future bandmate Jim Root, and another band called Heads on the Wall, which featured someone named Sean Crayon, which you obviously know as Clown. Members of his family reportedly owned a bowling center and they would host a night called the Rock and Roll Bowl where bands would play. Joey worked at a local gas station and on November 28, 1995, a man named Mark Anthony Cadavos went into that gas station where Joey was working and offered him a position in a new band called The Pale Ones. Joey would later meet up with the band during rehearsals at Anders Kolsefni's house, then the band's vocalist, and it's reported that Joey knew right then that he wanted to join the band. Joey said in an interview, quote, I remember trying so hard not to smile, so I didn't look like I wanted to join. I remained poker face, but I thought they ruled. Joey would happily join the band that would end up becoming Slipknot, and the rest became music history. In the years that would follow, there would be subtle hints of tension among the members in Slipknot. Take this 2004 interview, for instance, with Kansas City publication The Pitch. Joey hinted at internal turmoil in the band questioning whether or not Slipknot could even stay together long enough to release their Volume 3 The Subliminal Verses album. We're going to make it through this tour, he said, and I'm thinking we're going to make another record. I know Corey probably said some things about the band breaking up that were a little bit misconstrued at the time, and he doesn't feel like that anymore. We're getting along really well, which is a little strange. There's always been really distinct personalities in the band. We all love each other, but at the same time, it's like, I'm gonna kill you, dude. It's just like that in our band. It's just tension. And if it wasn't for that type of mentality, we wouldn't have the band that we have and we wouldn't have the sound that we have. Slipknot vocalist Corey Taylor would also hint at the demise of the band in 2002. He said the group would soon be releasing their final record. Expounding on the topic on the Stone Sour message board, he said, when I talk about the knot, it's never pessimistic. It is pragmatic. It is never in a negative way. It's just how it is. None of you have any idea what goes on behind the curtain of that band. Do you know how many people from Slipknot I've talked to besides Jim in the last six months? One, you wanna tell me how I'm supposed to feel upbeat about a band that is eating itself? First of all, no one can touch what we did in the knot. We accomplished something everyone said we couldn't do. We put out two of the best albums, in my opinion, of all time. I believe we can do one more album and go out on a high note. But as far as hanging out after we have lost our relevance, never. I got one effing word for you, Gwar. I will never do that. 
and I would never let that happen to a band I bled and almost went blind in one eye for, not to mention nearly losing my voice and losing the ability to sing. It's this simple. I love The Knot. I have more than earned the right to talk about the future of the band, especially when there's so much shit going on behind the scenes that thankfully you guys don't see, and I would do everything in my power to keep from you. Because if you don't like what I say, and when taken out of context, indeed it does appear like I'm talking shit, you would lose your effing minds if you hear the real shit. I have more respect for you guys than that. This is true. There will be another Slipknot album and another Slipknot tour. If you want me to lie to you, I'll tell you every effing thing is absolutely hunky-dory. But if you know anything about me, I hate lies, and I don't like getting into the habit. I love you guys, but sometimes shit happens. Lucky for you, most of the shit will happen all over me, as I was Corey. In the years that would follow, the members of Slipknot would allude to the demise of the band in various interviews, while at the same time, the group continued to climb the ladder of the music industry, getting bigger and bigger and developing a global audience. Slipknot would go on to become one of the most recognizable bands, not just in North America, but also around the world. Unfortunately, despite that global success, Early on in their career, Slipknot was marred by bad business dealings and, as indicated by multiple members of the band, the group has yet to make any money from selling millions of albums. This due to a long-term record deal with Roadrunner Records. As a result, the members of Slipknot were forced to adopt a grueling touring schedule which would undoubtedly place the members of the band under even more stress. Slipknot has reportedly sold a whopping 30 million albums around the world, though they claim that they aren't getting any royalties from that music. The band would continue their exponential growth around the world, and it seemed with every album in the years that would follow, the band would get bigger and bigger. Their song Psychosocial would become a mega hit for the band. The video on YouTube alone has a whopping 393 million views. That's quite the impressive feat for a heavy metal band. Slipknot's video for The Devil and I comes in a close second. Following the shocking passing of founding Slipknot bassist Paul Gray on May 24, 2010, it appeared that the members of Slipknot had grown closer together in the wake of such a tragedy. That's why, roughly three years later, Slipknot fans were stunned to read the headlines. Joey Jorgensen was no longer a member of Slipknot. By this time, Joey had become a heavy metal icon, and he was the third person to join Slipknot. His signature drum solo showed him drumming upside down, an incredible feat that would regularly circulate in fan film videos on the internet. Joey's drum solos became a major draw for Slipknot at their live shows, something you truly had to see in person. By this time, he had performed with bands like Metallica, Marilyn Manson, Korn, and many others. The news would shock Slipknot fans, with many wondering how the band would continue without such an important ingredient. The band posted a brief statement on their website on December 12, 2013, though it was unclear at the time whether Joey had quit the band or Slipknot had fired him. The group wrote to their fans, to our maggots and fans around the world, it is with great pain but quiet respect that for personal reasons, Joey Jordison and Slipknot are parting ways. We all wish Joey the best in whatever his future holds. We understand that many of you will want to know how and why this has come to be, and we will do our best to respond to these questions in the near future. It is our love for all of you, as well as for the music we create, that spurs us to continue on and move forward with our plans of releasing new material in the next year. We hope that all of you will come to understand this, and we appreciate you for your continued support while we plan the next phase of the future of Slipknot. Thank you, The Knot. This statement from Slipknot would ultimately lead to more questions from fans than answers. Joey wouldn't respond to news of his departure until about a week later, when he posted the following statement on his Facebook page. To my fans, friends, and associates, I would like to start the new year by addressing the recent rumors and speculation regarding my departure from Slipknot. I want to make it very clear that I did not quit Slipknot, writing in capital letters. This band has been my life for the last 18 years, and I would never abandon it or my fans. This news has shocked and blindsided me as much as it has all of you. While there is much more I would like to say, I must remain silent to further details at this time. 
I would like to thank you all for your unwavering love and support and wish everyone a very happy and healthy new year. Vocalist Corey Taylor would also address the news in an interview around that time with Minneapolis radio station 93X. He said, it's still so fresh and there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that people don't know about. So legally and respectfully, I can't say a lot about it. I can confirm that we have parted ways with Joey. And as soon as we can say something, we will. But we're trying to protect him, trying to protect us. Just making sure we do everything right, because that's what we would expect from ourselves and what we would expect from the fans. Then, roughly three years later in an interview with Metal Hammer, Joey Jordison cited a rare neurological disorder called transverse myelitis, which contributed to his playing difficulties in his final years with Slipknot. He also alleged that the band fired him via email, which came as a total surprise. He told Metal Hammer, no band meeting, none. Anything from management, no, nothing. All I got was a stupid effing email, saying I was out of the band that I busted my ass my whole life to effing create. That's exactly what happened and it was hurtful. I didn't deserve that shit after what I'd done and everything I'd been through. They got confused about my health issues, and obviously even I didn't know what it was at first. They thought I was effed up on drugs, which I wasn't at all. I've been through so many things with those guys and I love them very much. What's hurtful is the way it went down and was not effing right. That's all I want to say. The way they did it was effing cowardly. It was effed up. Since around 2018, very little has been heard musically from Joey Jordison, though he does occasionally post on his Instagram. He's previously stated that he would be open to rejoining Slipknot. He told Metal Hammer, quote, Honestly, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but if that was brought up, what I'd want to do would be to get together. I'd want to see them, just hug it out and feel that energy that we had when we were effing young and hungry and all that shit. They're my brothers. We'd hug and talk and do shit like we used to do. We used to sit up all night long planning this shit and what we wanted to do. So that's how I'd want to do it. It'd have to be in person. If it happened, that would be effing awesome. But only time will tell. Sadly, it does seem unlikely that Joey will rejoin Slipknot full time. But Jordison has wished the band well. Speaking on their first album without him, The Grey Chapter, he said, quote, I listened to the whole record multiple times and I think it's great. It's effing cool and I'm glad they moved on. I'm glad they're carrying on the name, because what's important is the fans. That's all for now. Thanks for joining us today on Rockfeed. Check out some of our other videos and deep dives. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe with notifications on for more videos just like this one and breaking news and updates from your favorite artists.